Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins... Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the chaplains of the United States Air Force. He's on call 24 hours a day. He works with every rank, from private to general. His responsibility is the moral and spiritual welfare of every man in the United States Air Force. He is the Air Force chaplain. To those in need, whether pilot or mechanic, sergeant or civilian, his is the sympathetic ear, the helping hand, the understanding heart. Our story today is called Operation Mercy, as proudly we hail the chaplains of the United States Air Force all over the world. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Young man, an interesting career lies ahead of you if you can qualify as an aircraft observer in your United States Air Force. As a flying officer, you'll be an important member of the fighting team on one of the great aircraft produced in this era of jet aviation. The United States Air Force needs these technical specialists officer personnel skilled in navigation, aircraft maintenance, radar interception, and other important skills. There's a future for you as an aircraft observer in your country's Air Force. Can you qualify? Well, if you're single, between 19 and 26 and a half, and a high school graduate, visit your nearest Air Force base or your nearest United States Air Force recruiting station and find out. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production... Operation Mercy. Reverend Hoffmeister, I came to say goodbye. It was nice of you to visit me during your leave, Chaplain Moore. To the contrary. It's been a pleasure just to be able to come to your little church here and talk to you. Besides, the view is as beautiful from here as any I've seen. Yeah, yeah, the mountains are truly magnificent. And my little village of Macklin down there looks so peaceful. I've seen nothing more charming in all of Switzerland. Did you enjoy your skiing? This warm spell didn't make for perfect snow conditions, but your gentle slopes were made for a beginner like me. Ah, this warm weather, it frightens me. Why is that? Haven't you noticed, Chaplain, how quiet everything has been around here? No hunting, no loud singing, no horns blowing? I can't honestly say that I have. This morning, I did not even ring the church bell. It's the first time it has not rung on Sunday since I've been here. When the villagers came to the services, they thanked me for remembering. Remembering what? Warm weather like this is avalanche weather. When it gets so hot in January, the snow, which has been piling up all winter, begins to melt. And then, all of a sudden, a noise, a gunshot, and it comes tumbling down. Himmel, a train whistle worries you? If we remain silent for a moment, we will both know if there is anything to fear. Chaplain, would you go to the window and look down towards the village? Tell me what you see. It's incredible. 
It's preposterous. What? What do you see, Chaplain? Snow. Nothing but snow. Huh. There is no village down there. Destroyed. Buried. My village, my home, my people. One train engineer who forgot. And it is gone. Is there anything we can do? For the moment, I can think of only one thing, Chaplain. We can pray. It's amazing. The avalanche took place only two hours ago, and rescue parties are here already. Yeah, yeah, it is a necessity if we are to save any lives. Well, I know the Red Cross will soon be here, and I'm sure your government will give aid, and the Air Force will be sending its air rescue service. But I have another idea. Yeah? I wonder if I'll be able to get back to First and Fellbrook in my car. I imagine a great many roads are blocked. The roads are cleared almost immediately to allow for rescue crews. You may be held up for short periods, but you shouldn't have any trouble. Good. I would like to get back to the Air Force base as soon as possible. We can help. Any help will be welcome, Chaplain. Oh, look. They've just dug someone out of the snow. Oh, it is a woman. Ah, she is still alive. That is why the rescue party start immediately. Another hour or two, and who knows? But where will she go? How, how will she live? We will help each other. We will survive. And we will help too, Reverend Hoffmeister. You have my hand on that. Thank you. Thank you, Chaplain. You know, if you will excuse me, I must see if I can help. The more I do, the more others will be free to do. Of course. You can expect to hear from me soon, Reverend Hoffmeister. I shall not forget. Thank you, thank you, Chaplain. And goodbye for now. The sight of those men digging desperately in the snow made me feel that we must help. I agree with you, Chaplain. You're my assistant, Airman Tuart. As welfare specialist, do you think we can? I know we can, sir. Maybe a lot of work, but... Well, the work doesn't frighten me. How about you? It means staying at the office late, planning, talking at various meetings? Oh, excuse me, Chaplain, but talking about meetings reminds me. You have one with the CO in 15 minutes. Oh, you're right. I'd almost forgotten we were going to discuss remodeling the service club. I have your notes on what's needed and estimated costs right here. Good. And while I'm with him, I think I'll ask him about our plans for the village of Mecklen. You know, we ought to have a name for the drive. It'll give it impact. Mm. How about Operation Mecklen? Sounds a little like a bombing effort, don't you think? What about Operation Mercy? How's that sound? It sounds fine. I'm sure Colonel Ehrlich will cooperate. Well, if I'm going to get there in time, I better hurry. Oh, Chaplain, before you leave... Don't forget your appointment with the reporter from the base newspaper at 1,500 hours. Will you be here when he comes? Yes, sir. I may need your moral support to get the lead story in this week's paper for Operation Mercy. I think your remodeling plan's very sound, Chaplain. There's no reason why we can't get started almost immediately. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, by the way, how was your leave? I had a fine time up until the last day. Well, that's right. You were there when the avalanches hit, weren't you? I was right there, Colonel. If I hadn't been visiting in a little church outside Mecklen, I might not be alive today. Mm. Must have been a terrible tragedy. It was. But it's not over for me, Colonel. Seeing all that devastation made me want to do something, something that will require your help. I'd like to organize a drive here on the base. A drive, Chaplain? Yes, they're going to need food, clothing, perhaps even money to help rebuild their village. I thought perhaps we here at First and Fulbrecht could uh, adopt the village of Mecklen. I'll be more than happy to cooperate, Chaplain. Thank you, Colonel. Operation Mercy thanks you, too. Operation Mercy, is that what you're calling it? It's a good name. By the way, Colonel, if it isn't an imposition, uh, could you check with your wife when you get home tonight and see if your family has outgrown anything lately? Clothing will be a major goal in our drive. If they haven't outgrown anything, I'll just make believe they have. You can count on my full support. 
My philosophy is do unto others as you would be done by. A good thought, Colonel, and thanks for it. You just gave me a title for my sermon for this coming Sunday. You're doing a wonderful job with our choir, Tuart. Thanks, Chaplain. Is that Sunday's sermon you're working on? Yes, something Colonel Ehrlich said this morning gave me the idea. Pardon me, Chaplain. May I interrupt you for a few minutes? Certainly, Lieutenant. My name is Dawson, Chaplain. Lieutenant Francis Dawson. My friends call me Buck. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? I hear you were at Mecklen on Sunday when the avalanche took place. Yes, I was. So was my wife, Chaplain. She was registering her sister at a school there. She was supposed to be back last night, and she hasn't arrived. I'm worried. Do you think she's all right? I don't know, I but... hear the whole town was buried under tons of snow. I'm afraid... I'm afraid she may not have survived. As I remember, the school is outside of the village. The chances are that if she was there, she's safe. Yes, Chaplain, but was she? Have you contacted the Red Cross? I haven't been able to get myself to do anything yet. Are you off duty for the day, Lieutenant? Yes, I am. Then go home and try to rest. I'll see what I can do. All telephone or telegraph contact with the village was impossible as recently as an hour ago, but I'll keep trying until I can get some news. Thank you, Chaplain. I thought I'd stay in the church here for a few moments. I'll go to my office and put a call through right now. Thank you again. Please, Lord. I love her so much. Let her be safe. Morning, Chaplain. Am I late or are you early? I'm early. I've been trying to get some news of Lieutenant Dawson's wife. No luck so far. Oh. It was quite a day you had yesterday. There's a lot to be done. Which reminds me, we ought to set up a schedule for making announcements about the drive around the base. Don't forget that notice we planned on tacking up on the bulletin boards. It's written, but we'll need to get it mimeographed. Chaplain, if you'll pardon my asking, when are you going to have time to do all this? I'll make time. Right now, I don't know how, but I will. And uh, if I know you, you will too. Chaplain Moore's office. What? Oh, yes, he is. Just a moment. For you, Chaplain, Zurich, Switzerland calling. Hello, Chaplain Moore speaking. Yes. Yes, I... I see. I see. Then there's still some hope. Yes. Yes. I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Good or bad news, Chaplain? A little of both, I'm afraid. That was the Red Cross office in Zurich. Air Rescue Service reports that the school where Lieutenant Dawson's wife was registering her sister is safe, but completely isolated. Oh? On the other hand, rescue workers report finding a suitcase belonging to a Patricia Dawson buried in the snow outside of the hotel. Mm. Air rescue isn't rushing to the school since it, uh, it was undamaged and they have plenty of food and an auxiliary power supply of their own. I'm afraid one question is still unanswered. I'm going out, Chaplain? Have to, son. You can't give a man news like this over the telephone. I'd give anything not to have to tell him. But until they report to the contrary from Switzerland... I'm going to believe that Patricia Dawson is still alive. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Operation Mercy. We'll return to the second act of our story in just a moment. But first... Here's an important announcement for all high school graduates... If you can qualify as an aviation cadet, you can become a commissioned officer in the Air Force, earning more than $5,000 a year. As an aviation cadet, you'll get the most thorough aviation training in the world. Oh, but it won't be easy. 
It takes a good man to make the grade. But when you complete your training, you'll receive a commission as a second lieutenant in the Air Force and have a career ahead of you that will take you as far, both in military and commercial aviation, as you want to go. To qualify as an aviation cadet, you must be between 19 and 26 and a half, single, in excellent health, and a high school graduate. See your local Air Force recruiting officer for complete details. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Operation Mercy. While the Air Force's Air Rescue Service flies out the injured and the rescue parties dig frantically into tons of snow, back at Furston Felbrook Air Force Base, Chaplain Moore goes ahead with his plans for Operation Mercy. It is only Wednesday morning, but already there are notices posted on every bulletin board. Announcements have been made at the service club, the flight line, wherever a group of men is working or relaxing together. Operation Mercy is an appeal to all, and the chaplain knows all will answer. In time of trouble, we look to the more fortunate for aid. And as the fortunate, I know that we will remember to do unto others as we would be done by. Chaplain Moore? Yes, come in. I'm uh, Airman Second Class David Solomon, Chaplain. Uh, may I speak to you for a moment? Of course, son. Sit down. Oh, thanks. I, I read about Operation Mercy Chaplain on one of the bulletin boards. I came over because I wanted to help. I'm glad to see you. We can use help. Yes. You see, Chaplain, I'm from Pittsburgh, and, well, back in 36, when I was a kid, there was a terrible flood. Our, our house was ruined, my parents' store was practically swept away, and if we hadn't had help then, well, we might never have come through it. Nature does some pretty terrible things sometimes. And for years afterwards, my parents always talked about how we never could have gotten back on our feet without the, the aid of those thousands of people who sent contributions of food, clothing, and money. That's just the situation we have here. Well, Chaplain, I feel that nothing I can do for Mecklen can even start to repay the people who helped us when we needed it. Well, I want to do everything possible. Did you have anything specific in mind? Wherever I can be of use, Chaplain. We will need someone to take charge of the storage room. Could you do that? I don't see why not. I'd like to have the clothing separated and packed according to size. Mm -hmm. Food should be packed according to type. You know, soups all in one case, fruit juices in another, and so on. That should be easy enough. When can I start? Well, the first batches of things are due today. Could you uh, possibly start tonight? Yes, sir. Wonderful. You know, Chaplain, there's... Well, there's another reason for my being so happy to help on Operation Mercy. What's that? Well, I've always believed that regardless of religion, personal differences, or anything else, that Americans can work together if they try. An effort like Operation Mercy is proof that what I believe is true. Johnson... Sergeant Ralph A. Five dollars. Jorgens. Lieutenant Charles R. Three dollars. Come in. Good evening, Chaplain. Good evening, Lieutenant Dawson. What are you doing up at this hour? Don't you go on duty early tomorrow morning? Yes, Chaplain, but I just couldn't sleep. I went out for a walk and saw your light. I thought perhaps you'd have a few minutes to talk. Of course. I was just typing up the list of contributors to Operation Mercy. It can wait. I don't know what to do, Chaplain. I don't want to believe that my wife is dead, but ever since you told me about the suitcase, I can't seem to believe anything else. They would have found her, too, don't you think, if she'd been anywhere near the suitcase? Well, I know when I think it through that there is a good chance that she's alive. But... You love her very much. Yes, Chaplain. I don't think I could get along without her. Then you must believe that she is alive, as I do. I'm trying, Chaplain. I really am. Perhaps if you went into the chapel, you might find strength and faith in her return. Would you come with me, Chaplain? If it would help you? It will. Here.
Here we are, Lieutenant. Is there any prayer you particularly like? Yes. The 23rd Psalm. Shall we say it together? Of course. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh, he maketh me, me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still. I'm happy to have had a chance to speak to you while we were all together at the officer's call, gentlemen. I thank you for your expressions of cooperation and will look to you to help make Operation Mercy the success it deserves to be. And so I thank you for taking your minds off of the exciting basketball game you have been watching and listening to my story of the village of Mecca and Operation Mercy. I see that the halftime intermission is almost over, so I will just say thank you for your attention and hope for your help. And I know that all of you here at the NCO mess will give everything you can to those unfortunate people who have been made homeless by the avalanche at Mecklen last Sunday. Thank you. Airman Solomon, Chaplain Moore. I just called to find out how things are going over there. Are you swamped? Good. Well, there's another two baskets of clothing on their way over. Fine. See you later. So long. I'm not going to pass the hat. I'm not going to ask you to give anything now. But after you leave the theater and go home, rummage through your closets, check in your basements or attics. Perhaps Junior has outgrown a play suit. Perhaps you bought a few too many cans of something. Anything you care to give to Operation Mercy will be of real help. This happened to be an avalanche in Switzerland. But make no mistake, it could just as easily have been a flood in the Missouri Valley. I know I can count on you all. Thank you for listening, and good night. Yes, Captain Ludden, uh, Colonel Ehrlich is definitely okayed Hangar 1 for the show. I know that you people over in special services are just as busy as we are over here, and I appreciate your going out of your way to set up this amateur night. Right. So long, and, and thanks again. Nice guy, that Captain Ludden. Yeah, always has been happy to work with us. Oh, is it really 0900? It sure is, Chaplain. I'm due at the base hospital at 0930, and there are at least a dozen things I wanted to get done before I went over. I'll get some publicity out on the amateur hour right away. Now, have I got it straight? Admission fee will be one piece of clothing or one can of food for Operation Mercy, right? Roger. It's a terrific idea. Especially if Captain Ludden can get the best talent on the base. I'm sure he'll be able to do that. Anything else you want me to do while you're at the hospital? Uh, you might see if you can get a couple of announcements onto the Armed Forces Radio in Munich. The more publicity we can get, the better off we'll be. Ah. Don't forget, it's this Saturday night. Uh, that's uh, night after tomorrow. Roger. Anything special you're taking with you to the hospital? Oh, I've got uh, writing paper, envelopes and pencils, magazines, and a stack of books in the car. I, I can't think of anything else. You know, I find these visits to the hospital one of the most rewarding things I do. It's wonderful to see the way their faces light up and how anxious they are to have someone to talk to. Mm. Well, being in a hospital is like being on an isolated island with the same bunch of guys for a couple of years. After a while, I guess the most important thing in the world is seeing a new face. Oh, and Tuart, will you uh, try the Red Cross in Zurich again? See if you can get any more information about Patricia Dawson. The last time I saw the lieutenant, he looked like he hadn't slept for an hour in the last four days. Chaplain, come in. Thanks. How are you, Buck? 
Not very well, Chapman, as you can imagine. I've been trying to get hold of the Red Cross all day, but I couldn't get through to them. I got a message through, Buck. I expect them to call here any minute. Oh. Well, sit down, Chaplain, if you have the time. It helps having you here. I'm glad it does. Before I saw your light the other night and came in to talk to you, I was almost ready to do something pretty desperate. I'm glad I was working overtime. So am I now. But at that moment, the thought of being without Pat, well... I don't believe you're going to be without her for very long, Buck. I'm sure she's all right. Maybe when the call comes through from Switzerland, they'll have some news. I'm sure they will. And it's going to be good. Well, no matter what happens, Chaplain, I'd like to start helping you on Operation Mercy. If Pat is all right, it'll be in thanks. If she isn't, it'll be in her... in her memory. We'd like to have you with us, Buck. Would you, Chaplain? I don't think I can. All right, Buck, it's up to you. Hello? Yes, from Switzerland? Yes. Yes, I'll wait. This is it, Buck. Hello? Yes. What? No, it isn't. Who is this? Just a minute. It's for you, Buck. It's your wife. Attention, high school graduates. If you're not afraid of hard work, if you can take rigid training six days a week for 52 weeks, then you've got what it takes to be an aviation cadet. And if that's the case, why, your future's all set. Aviation cadets graduate as Air Force lieutenants, earn more than $5,000 a year. To qualify, you must be a high school graduate between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single and in excellent physical and mental condition. Visit your local Air Force recruiting station for complete details. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. And this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>